The Alpha Sessions with Emma Joyce. I'm Emma and this is the Alpha Sessions and um, I'm here with Creton Cannon. Um, can you guys just let me know um, who you are and how you're involved with the band? Louise. <laughs> I'm Louise O'Connor and I'm the lead singer of Cruise on Cannon. Um, I actually didn't know quite a lot of the band before I started with this project. So um, it's really nice to be part of it. And yeah, I'm excited to see where we go. Cool. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm, well, I'm Ben, I'm the drummer of Cruise on Cannon. And um, yeah, I, I met Alex at a jam night when I was probably about 14. And um, and then many years later, got the call and joined. So loving it. Cheers, Alex. <laughs> All righty, I'm Dan. Uh, I'm the keyboard player. Um, I'm kind of the odd one out because I'm the only North London based uh, musician. Everyone else is, is all down south. Um, but um, uh, like the others, it was, uh, um, we, we've all kind of come together through, uh, through Alex mainly, but uh, me and Alex met uh, multiple times in, in multiple different places and fate seemed to uh, in, intertwine us together. And uh, uh, I was really pleased when, when he asked me to get involved with, with Crouton Cannon. Yeah, I guess that leaves me. So <laughs> I'm Johnny, I play bass guitar in Crouton Cannon. Uh, I met Alex uh, while we were at university. So we were both in the same live music society at UCL. Um, there was like a really good community of musicians and I just kind of kept up with Alex and then he wanted to start a band and was like, hey, you play bass. <laughs> so that's, yeah, pretty much a simple story. And uh, the rest is in the history of Crouton Cannon. <laughs> Who's Alex? <laughs> I'm Alex. I'm the Alex we're talking about. Hello. Yeah. So I guess I'm the, I'm, yeah, I started the band, like quite born together, as is evident. And I'm the guitarist. Um, and also do backing vocals along with Ben and Dan when we're doing uh, our live set. And um, how did you come up with the name? Because it's quite unusual, but very unique. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I guess I'll, I'll say why we chose, well, why I chose that name, because we did discuss the name for quite a while. It was hopefully going to be like a collaborative effort, but I did just have to, to call it <laughs> after <laughs> weeks and weeks of going back and forth. So Crouton Cannon, um, well, the thing that links us, there's not much that links us all together, as we were saying, it's me really, but we have this, the love of the same artists. So like, we're really into bands like Wolf Peck and Corey Wong is another artist involved with them. And we have all gone to their gigs together. And it was, I think it was last year that we all went to a Corey Wong gig together. And he came out on stage at Omera in London and chucked out okay. loads of vegan croutons <laughs> out into the audience. And we, yeah. and we call them. It's on the vegan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so that's, yeah, that was just a little story which sparked the name. It was ironic as well because we, we did our, we recorded our album together at Soup Studios. So um, it all kind of ties in and links together. Is that oh, why yeah. on your Instagram there's that tin graphic that just carries all the way through? <laughs> yeah, that's right. We, we're doubling down on the soup. Yeah. I love that. It's great. <laughs> also, makes yeah, me really like hungry just... whenever I listen to your music, which is a nice kind of time. Yeah. Oh, great mask. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That yeah, is we, the Crouton Cannon. We really feel that soup is a, is a, is a universal thing, you know. Absolutely. It really brings people together, much like, much like music. <laughs> oh. So we've chatted briefly about how you met and Alex sort of being the you, you, you use the word nebulous from it, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I guess I was, I was trying to find the right thing. I was like the middle node or like the middle of the mind map. And I was like, nebulous is, sounds kind of smart. <laughs> <laughs> um, so did you all know immediately that you wanted to be in a band together? Uh, well, I guess, well, I hadn't met any of the others except for Alex beforehand. I think we, we did sort of, like I remember getting drinks with Ben and Louise just to get to know them um, as, you know, if you've never met someone you're trying to make original music from the get-go there's a lot of ground to make up at the beginning and I think we just started talking and we just all been to the same gigs we were all digging the same sort of music <laughs> um obviously with our own nuances as well and um yeah it kind of just all sort of sort of came together quite naturally I think that's the best way to 
a lot of us have all been involved in, I guess, uh, what would be broadly called the session music world. Yeah. Uh, we've all played with, with lots of bands and lots of different artists all across London. And so uh, I think Alex is, is sort of, I'm speaking for you, Alex, but your, your sort of idea was to bring together a bit of a, a super band of, of people that he he respected and knew, you know, were, were going to be, uh, you know, people that he really wanted to work with and he knew would work well together as well. I mean, it turned out that Johnny and I have been to like all of the same gigs over the past sort of five years. Really... <laughs> and then we kept on, then we kept on bumping into each other at gigs after we discovered <laughs> that as well. It was amazing. So if we've had no gigs this year, does that mean you and Johnny haven't seen mm. each other? Yeah, we don't like each other anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so you've got a brand new single that's just been released. Um, it's called Share. Do you want to tell us a bit about that? So what as a lot of my song ideas start it was just talking to my partner Jane um about just random stuff but she had a story about um a woman who was expecting and she didn't know but then suddenly she got all this marketing aimed at pregnant women and it was almost like that's how she found out she was pregnant that somehow all these ad algorithm rhythms all these ad algorithms online had like deduced that from her buying habits she was pregnant and it's just the power of all these these big big data companies like google and um amazon that just know so much about us without us really real realizing it and there's that song the song share just plays on all those those quirky things that can happen and what they know about us and leads quite nicely to social media i think generally as a band how do you feel about it it definitely can be used as a, as a positive tool um, and I think there's, I mean definitely for me I've discovered different people and different influences um, I, and even kind of finding new musicians um, it's quite nice to then link up to their social media but I think um, there are obviously a lot of negatives that, that come with that and um, I think our approach on social media is much more on the kind of humour side of things just to, to kind of lighten like in that but I think it's quite interesting because it's come up a lot about um I guess in in my group of friends of oh I've just had this targeted ad for what we spoke about a couple of weeks ago and about the kind of idea that we're always being listened to um and and what's targeted by that so I think you, you hear that in the song definitely and particularly in the lyrics um, it's a great track by the way um thanks, thanks. <laughs> Um, I'll sign up to the mailing list. Yeah. <laughs> did you guys record it during the whole um, like COVID restriction lockdown thing? And how did that work? We recorded it like the beginning of 2019, actually. So, mm. um, I mean, but had, if, it, had we recorded it in the pandemic, I think it would have been fine. Like I've seen some people have been recording at Soup Studios a fair amount. So. Mm. Yeah, that's, that's where we recorded it last year. Okay. Um, yeah, we have done a bit of work together over the over lockdown. We did we covered um, a song together, and we've we've been sending things back and forth. Yeah, the the, the reason that we have waited so long to um, release it is, yeah, again, it's, it's down to sort of my 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 master plan for the band. Uh, okay. um, just being, I suppose, as a completely new artist that no one's heard before, and with no following, like, if we just well, we had quite a lot of songs recorded but if we just released them all in one go I felt that only our friends and family would listen to them and then they'd be gone and there'd be nothing for sort of new fans and new followers to to expect and look forward to whereas yeah. we've been trying to eke all of our songs out that we've already recorded um, with as much content and like, music videos and social media content for each of them as we can so that yeah we can sort of use them to the to the maximum potential for each song, if you know what I mean. The message that you didn't
The Alpha Sessions with Emma Joyce. In terms of promoting the single um, this year, um, have you had to do anything different to normal? It's been a bit hard because obviously we've not been able to gig uh, sure. as much as, as we wanted to. And, and we, uh, we've been really excited. We, 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 you know, un, until uh, the lockdown started in March, we were really gearing up to, to, to getting a lot more events and, uh, and pushing not just Cher, but the, the entire album. Yeah. Um, and we've not been able to do that. So we've had to be creative in, in other ways, as I say, recording um, some sort of multi split screen covers from home and, uh, and, and coming up with uh, more, more creative social media methods. But uh, we did have a gig uh, fairly recently where, um, again, just, just before the uh, most recent uh, measures have come in, yeah. um, where we've been able to um, you know, to, to get together again. And that was a, that was a really nice uh, opportunity to, to, to play together again, to, to do, to bring back all of these uh, songs. And even just when rehearsing, uh, we come up with new, uh, new ideas, new, new things that we can add to our live sets as well. Makes a massive difference, social interaction, particularly as a band. And mm. um, what about the writing and recording process? Um, how does that work between you guys? So writing 
for, for the songs that we've done so far has it's mainly been me um because i suppose i i i just started writing on my own for the for cruise on canon way back in like 2018 i just decided i wanted to start a band i wanted to release some of my own music um i just started writing the songs over that year and then these these four will remember that I sort of got in contact with them late that year saying, I've got these songs recorded, um, like demoed, these them songs are ready to record. Do you like them? Do you want to record them with me? Um, and then we did meet to write rehearse with me and Louise sort of met a couple of times to go, because Louise being the lead singer, it's really important to, uh, to, get, to get Louise comfortable with the lyrics and the, the melody. And then we met to rehearse a couple of times and then I'm sure these four will also attest to how dramatic the transformation was from sort of my initial ideas <laughs> to what what um, actually came out, what we did, what we created together. Like, I, I listened back to the um, the demos recently, and they're they're a world apart. And I'm a bit surprised that they actually agreed to do it because to my <laughs> ears they, they sound really bad now. <laughs> um, yeah, Alex is a is a very talented musician, but. Um, and he, he was able to kind of come up with a, a basic keyboard part for me and a basic bass part for, for, for Johnny. And, and he knew what, what he wanted to do in his head, but bringing us individually on board and, and choosing us, I think, specific uh, as musicians, we, uh, we, had, we brought a lot of our own influences and our own styles to it. And I think that every, uh, every musician has, uh, in the band has sort of added their own little stamp onto some of these songs and, and uh, to, to kind of make that transition from demos to, to, to full live recording. So it almost sounds like it's been built more by the time it's finished with you. It's been, uh, it's, the, the initial process was, was certainly Alex's in terms of the, the lyrics and the structure and the, uh, and the songwriting. But um, by the time that we've, we've come together to actually put them uh, onto record, I, I think that uh, we've all uh, collaboratively um, come up with a lot of um, a, a lot of different ideas and, and different approaches together uh, as a band as well which is which is nice. When Alex and I initially um, met to kind of rehearse the songs Alex obviously knew that he wanted a female singer so he was writing for female voice um, so obviously he's been too harsh on himself listening back to demos and being <laughs> scrutinizing that <laughs> That side of things because he was obviously singing for a for a female um but when we met it was definitely a, a process that I really enjoyed just kind of knowing a little bit more about his writing process and and we were all able to as Dan said all able to kind of add little bits um into it and I know that personally when we all came together in our first rehearsal I think there was a bit of shock that we all clicked so well because I think there, there was a bit of a, a con not a concern but just a reservation that because a lot of us hadn't performed together or even met um, or you know had had that kind of relationship building beforehand we didn't necessarily know how well it was going to go so that first initial rehearsal was uh, a happy incident because it was <laughs> us all being like oh my god guys look at this this is great so and I think that's just kind of built from that and then after that first rehearsal we only had one more rehearsal without Dan and then we went into the studio to yeah. record that yeah so oh, it was no pressure. Like, what you're hearing basically on the record is the, the third time that we all played <laughs> that's mad yeah. I can't wait to catch you at a gig because I feel like if you get along so well in real life, then on the stage that will really come across. Um, so I can't wait to catch you at a gig back in whenever we're allowed um, to kind of feel that because I always feel like you can definitely, as an audience member, connect with the aura that's on stage and the connection that's on stage. And I think that would be really exciting. Yeah, I think that's something, something we still have a lot of space to develop because we've only played a couple of gigs. And um, mm. so there's still, a, I feel like there's still a lot of potential to be had in terms of, you know, exploring new things or exploring new types of songs and stuff like that. Um, what about band inspirations? Where would you say you get your inspirations from? Should we have like a Wolfpack counter? It's just to <laughs> any sort of reference to the band or any of the members. Mm. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting we, we speak about Wolfpack because I don't think we sound much like them at all. Like, we're funky, but I don't 
I don't play drums like any of them, really. And we haven't, the producing isn't, isn't similar. You know, when, when I was in the studio, when we were in the studio, sorry, and, and Dave, our, the engineer, was asking um, what sort of drum sounds we were going for. Like, I played him some Headhunters and I played him some Tower of Power because um, I like that kind of early 70s organic sounding drum, organic drum sound. But then what ended up on the record was something that sounded kind of a mix between that and like Blood Sugar Sex Magic by Red Hot Chili Peppers. And also a bit of Bonham in there. So I was very happy, like, you know, all brilliant drum sound. But... Do you have similar musical days apart from Bill Peck or? Is there anyone else? <laughs> Interestingly, yeah. Like, I mean, again, this is evident in mine and Johnny's gig history that we've we've been to see D'Angelo accidentally together. We've also been to see Bon Iver accidentally together. We most of us went to see our friends' band, um, Another Sky. Who are, oh, they're great. Yeah, mm. they're, yeah. Um, on, how do you go know, accidentally together? Wait, as in well. <laughs> <laughs> Accidentally you know. a gig. <laughs> <laughs> that has happened quite a lot to me. I've just been like, oh, oh, oh so yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, I did bump into Louise at a gig that we didn't plan on ending up in together. The Alpha Sessions with Emma Joyce. I wanted to touch briefly on you chatting about the gigs earlier. Do you have a pre-gig ritual? 
what would you like to see together before you go on stage? But, I mean, based on history, which is of the times. two gigs, yeah, yeah <laughs> we, we, we always get vegan Ethiopian food. That's what we do. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we did last time. <laughs> oh, but to be yeah. fair, we got we got a what did we get? A Greek gyro, wasn't it? For the, for yeah, the first one. That's right, yeah. Oh, we did. Yeah. Yeah. We showed, we showed some kind of <laughs> some kind of exotic food. Uh, yeah. Pre-ritual, pre-gig uh, <laughs> sort of vibe is always good. But yeah, I mean, I, I, suppose, I suppose you can literally say that fifty percent of our gigs we have in Ethiopian food, and fifty percent of our gigs have Greek food beforehand. <laughs> so you choose. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Um, and if you were to get a call tomorrow and COVID wasn't a thing and you could play a gig anywhere in the world, where would you want it to be? Sorry, big question. <laughs> wow, I'd, okay. I'd go somewhere somewhere in uh, the south of USA, in Nashville or a, a Tennessee, some, something uh, um, somewhere cool like that would, would be would be quite interesting. Yeah, I think like somewhere like like Red Rocks in Denver. I think that would be one of those. <laughs> I mean, I I, there, I mean that we've got so many sort of small small intimate venues that we probably are on our bucket list as well. Um, even just in London, but um, like where? Yeah. Um, well, I mean, just the just the smaller venues that sound really great, like um, like Omira or Roundhouse or something like that. And, I mean, very vast mm -hmm. different size, but um, <laughs> even just in London, I think we have a lot of bucket list venues. Mm. If you could have anyone on stage with you guys for a collaboration, they could be mm. dead or alive. Um, who would be on that stage with you? Mm. I reckon James Brown with us. Actually, we may need to take too much charge, but that would be incredible. <laughs> yeah, he'd just whip us all into shape and then we'd, yeah. out of pure adrenaline, we'd play something good. <laughs> <laughs> anyone else? I don't know, maybe like Steve, Stevie Wonder would be pretty cool, I think. Okay, so mm. that would be my vote. Yeah, that would be my vote. Yeah, or just like Stevie Wonder's horn section, you know, then that would <laughs> come together. Just. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that might synergize better. Yeah, I yeah, can't kind of Stevie's big ego in our band, you know, just wanted to, we, just, we just need a horn section. <laughs> okay, and you're at this dream gig with Stevie Wonder's horn section and James Brown, and um, mm. you could have a dream rider on that gig. What would be on that rider? Hmm. Bottle of Jameson each. Go. <laughs> 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 no. Okay, so I'm going to have no I? pitch then on that gig. It's crap at the gig. Indian I mean, I'd, I'd ask, I, I mean, I, I don't think I've ever had a keyboard tech in my life, so I'd, I'd love a, like a, you know, my own personal uh, four keyboard set up, uh, have, you know, uh, the, the Lady Gaga one where she, she has it all in the round <laughs> and, uh, uh, you know, has, has the four different layers of keyboard. That's pretty cool. Nice. Mm. Yeah, I think maybe on a similar note, but taking that to a, the next level, if I could have like a, a trained seal. Wow. Or, or any, any other like aquatic hmm. mammal to like be, to sit in front of me and just press on all my like guitar effects pedals. So I don't have to think about that. <laughs> That would be really great. Something like, it doesn't have to be a seal, you know. I have signed seal delivered. Final question. Um, what are you guys working on at the moment and what can we expect from you next? I think right, Alex has written so a load of new tunes but the way that we're rehearsing them because we've got more time on our hands we're kind of they, they're even more of a collaborative kind of uh, effort so he's he's still got the full demos that he's bringing to us but um it's less it's even less of the alex marshall experience and it's, it's more kind of like the rest of us developing it and, and and trying new things out because we don't have the time limitations as we had before yeah alex i don't know what you think about that yeah that's what i was just thinking when we were describing the process of like our first recordings when it was more I bring it to you guys and then we booked the the we booked the studio already but now I think it's we've got more time but also because we just know each other a bit more we're more comfortable with each other um that yeah I've sort of I bring the idea but we've all got our own ideas to throw in and yet more than before 
Um, it's more of a band effort, which is totally what I wanted anyway. And it's, yeah, so far from the stuff we've rehearsed, it's got, I think, really good results. I'm really excited to share it. Oh, oh share. <laughs> and those plugs in. It'll be cool to hear whether we can tell as well, like this, if there's a slight difference between the newer stuff and the stuff that mainly Alex has written. Because I'm sure, naturally, if you guys have had input in it, then um, it will start, sound slightly different. Just in case people want to follow you, find out what you're up to, um, all that kind of stuff, uh, where can they go? What can they do on social? Alex. <laughs> <laughs> so I want to give other people the chance, but uh, yeah. So we're at Crouton Cannon on every major social media platform. Um, if you want to get the, the juiciest goss straight into your device, you can sign up to our mailing list at croutoncanon.com. Um, yeah, so we post updates about gigs when they happen, any new releases, just things we're up to. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for um, coming on. I would normally say in the studio, but just coming on Zoom. Um, and um, yeah, hopefully when things are a little bit more back to normal, we can have you into our actual studio um, and do a proper live session. That would be great. Amazing. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Thank, you again. thank you. Thank you, Emma. Thanks, Emma. Bye. Bye. Let me